Let's talk about the data masking in Salesforce, in sandboxes, in non-production environment, testers and developers sometimes should not see customer data after the migration or the refreshing of a sandbox. So how to do this is you substitute the customer emails, names, uh, highly sensitive numbers like social security numbers or whatever, um, the important numbers with other numbers on characters. Let's uh, listen to a video from Salesforce. This is very helpful. To understand data masks, let's start with a list of contacts in Salesforce. Your developers and testers need realistic test data in their sandboxes, but you don't want to give them the real thing. Data mask solves this problem for you. Let's look at an example that's already partially completed. A mask can strip out all of the email, comments, and chatter. And you can create masking rules for any standard or custom object. Contact has one partially built. There are several ways that you can mask the data. We can use random numbers, but specify a range for dates or amounts. Data mask includes libraries, like this one for first name, to provide realistic fake data. You can choose to delete data that you don't need for dev or test. Leaving an action blank will keep the existing data unmasked. We can save our changes to the object and to the mask. Running a mask is easy. You select your mask and then you run it. It will take some time to run, so let's skip ahead in time and see what happens. Once it's done, you can see the effects. Same list of contacts, but with fake emails, fake phone numbers, and new names. We didn't mask titles and didn't change the names of accounts, but we could have if we were concerned about that data. We also have a trail of logs. As you can see, objects, chatter feeds, emails, and case comments were masked as we wanted. There's also a phase for automatic deactivation. Datamask is smart enough to turn off processes, workflows, and triggers to prevent unintended changes or actions in the org.